Hello, I'm Linor Moudou. This is Africa 54. The European migrant crisis and how to solve it is continuing to cause strife among EU leaders. Thousands of African migrants are making the perilous journey to Europe in search of a better life. VOA reporter Abdulaziz Osman has just returned from Europe where he met some of the African migrants in Italy, Germany and Austria. And here is his report. Thousands of African migrants continue to flog into Europe from Libyan shores with overcrowded bull boats. The most treacherous and often deadly journey is the one that begins from Libya to Italy. The International Organization of Migration, IOM, says over 3,100 people have died in the high sea before they make it to Europe. In the latest search of migration, European Union naval ships have rescued more than 2,000 African traveling on boats, either drifting or stranded in the high waves. An IOM field officer in southern Italy told VOA that most of the recent African migrants on the move were Eritreans. In the first uh, months until uh, uh, August 2015, the number of Eritreans was 30,000. The number of somebody more or less 15,000, the number of uh, Sudanese 10,000. This teenager told me on condition of anonymity and with a blurred face that he was among underage migrants who suffered violence at the hands of brutal smugglers. The smugglers had beat me up after ignoring an order to line up. It was inhumane and painful. Among the migrants who made to Europe this year is Rahma Abu Karali, a Somali mother who delivered a baby on a German vessel hours after she was rescued. I met Rahma in Germany last week. I was feeling dizzy. I was tired because of the five-month journey. I could not deliver the baby in Libya, so I was ready to die with my unborn child. Danger not only larks on the route to Europe, but also these migrants continue to suffer even when they reach in Italy. Some lucky ones line up in Milan to find the temporary shelters for the night. Safiya Mohamed Abdullah is a diplomat at Somalia Embassy in Rome. She says if EU could have helped African migrants, their influx to the continent would halt. The youth want job creation training and help. If someone has all those in his or her native country, I don't think they would have to run away and flock to Europe. Even though the EU is struggling to deal with the flow of the migrants, there are no sign of African migrants stopping to move and to risk their lives. These African migrants face enormous hardships in their native countries and not even the treacherous refugees will stop them from trying their luck for a better life in Europe. Joining us now in the studio to tell us more about what he learned on his visit to Europe is Abdulaziz Osman of VOA Somali Service. Abdulaziz, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So you were in these three countries, Italy, Austria and Germany. Can you tell us what you saw firsthand on the ground in terms of the, 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 the situation that is prevailing among these migrants? Uh, we went to Germany. Uh, we went to first to, to Italy, southern Italy, where the new migrants arrive. Uh, we witnessed the arrival of more than 15 new migrants who have been rescued from the sea by the European Union Navy ships. When you see how they disembark from the ship, you could see that they went through hell. I mean, the stories that they told us when they landed is that uh, they risked their lives. They were close, that close to die in the sea. But uh, on the other hand, they were happy that they were rescued by the European Union and they were happy that they landed the uh, uh, European soil. But at the same time, they were horrified. So who are those, uh, these migrants? When you looked at the big picture, who are some of the people that are coming very often, according to your experience? Families, young people looking for a better life, a woman, children, what can you tell us? I, I think the, most of them are men. Uh, 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 very, I mean, there are women included also. And, small children also included. It's really hard to see a family 
actually holding a small baby like less than uh, a year and actually going through or went through that uh, risky journey on the sea. So, I mean, uh, the, most of them are mad, but in, women are children also included. Now, tell us about some of the stories that really uh, touched your heart. You spoke to that woman with her baby. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about these stories, perhaps one or two stories uh, that you can share. I think what I really uh, had when I was there is that they told me that the journey that they took was not worth it, even though they were going through it, but they didn't have any option. For example, some of the migrants say the, the way they have been mistreated in Libya or during their journey in Sahara is really unbearable. For example, that Somali lady, the mother who delivered on the baby, she said, even though I was uh, pregnant, but I was ready to die with my unborn child on the sea and that really touches me because yes. you can imagine a pregnant woman yes. risking her life and saying I want to die with my unborn child that really touched me this is incredible so who do they blame uh, generally when you speak to them in terms of their situation I, I think migrants actually varies because some of them are running away from buffer some of them are running away from war some of them are running away from their administration so probably they would blame they would blame africans and some of them will probably say you know what europeans or the west are responsible too because if they could have created jobs or opportunities in africa i mean this influx wouldn't happen so i mean it depends on who you talked about, I mean, most yeah. of them blame their native countries. And what are some of the solutions that they shared with, uh, with you? Perhaps? I think they need the Europeans to recognize them and give them opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if Europeans could actually do that, maybe the influx would actually subside. But I don't know how the Europe will do that. And when I was in, 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 in Milan, the story or the struggle that they face is not in, it doesn't end in the sea. It, they also get another suffering in European because when I was in Milan, I have seen them lining up to get a shelter for the night. If they don't get it, they will sleep on the streets. So imagine, and the trip is not cheap, it's very costly. Each of them pay what they told me around 5,000, 8,000, 9,000. So when they get there and they end up sleeping in the street, that's really very disappointing for them. So they pay what is a lot of money to, for uh, yeah, to them regulars, to yeah. end up yes. in this situation. Yes. It's terrible, Abdulaziz. Thank you so much. Very good reporting there. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay. And that was Abdulaziz Osman, a reporter with VOA's Somali Service.